say, Lord, we give you all the glory. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we adore you. Lord, we magnify your name. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy to be exalted. You are worthy to be lifted. Blessed be your name. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. Amen. You know, we are looking at uh, a topic tonight titled, Out of thy belly shall flow rivers of living water. Praise the Lord. Out of thy what? Belly shall flow rivers of living water. Amen. Don't forget that we are still in our season of dealing with Jezebel. Praise the Lord. Remember that it was on the 2nd of September while we prayed. That was a Thursday. While we prayed that the Holy Ghost said the Jew anointing. Praise the Lord. The Jew anointing. So, the next day Friday we started the prayers. So we started studying about Jew. Hallelujah. That Jew was raised up to destroy Jezebel and to wipe out the household of Baal. Not one person was left. Everybody was destroyed. Praise the Lord. Because they had sinned against God. They had brought iniquity upon God's people. Hallelujah. So every one of them was destroyed. Tonight, all your enemies will be destroyed in the Amen. name of Jesus we are praying. Amen. So today we want to acknowledge that without the Holy Spirit, we cannot do anything. True or false? Without the Holy Spirit, we cannot move any Jezebel. We cannot move any enemy. And Jezebel represents every form of evil. Everything you are passing through. Okay, uh, the testimony of the lady that gave her testimony last Sunday. Uh, married for 13 years. And after the 13 years, she said with her mouth that she enjoyed only one week. The husband left her and her son, who is seven years old, and traveled abroad. Never remind, remembers them. Praise the Lord. <laughs> but she came here on Tuesday, Papa Tuesday, for prayer. I was even telling her something. She said, no, I don't have all those kind of things. It was becoming an argument. I said, okay, go down, go and get a flyer from the car. Bring it. Come to the bar. Which one of these things you experience? She was able to identify one out of the Mayadam Shakon flyers. And then, later, while we are praying, she identified the second one. We prayed. While we are praying, she said that a man walked out of her, was wearing black, that he walked out through the door. She was going to tell my wife, I said, Mama, I was telling you. I said, see the man, is going there, see the man. Did you not hear me? I want to say, see the man. My wife said, I didn't see him, but I perceived that somebody left. Praise the Lord. I know the good news. <laughs> she said her shop is just opposite um, this estate. Um, on the other side of the road. Before she walked from here to her shop, the husband started chatting up on WhatsApp. Praise the Lord. And from her testimony, they've been in love. That every day they do video call, that's like she's dreaming. And this was somebody that wanted to go and make it rush. She's been looking for lawyers to help her do the thing so that she can be free. You see what God does. But one of the things that she told me when I was asking her, okay, do you do dreams? She said, you don't ask me to ask, okay, do you do dreams? Later she said that she uh, remembers that there's one night that she saw a man that was trying to kill her husband. A man was trying to kill her husband. I said, okay, so you see, a man trying to kill your husband. It means that that man just killed her husband. He's one fighting your marriage. Praise the Lord. So this battle uh, is not just only for those who want to marry or those who want businesses to happen. It's also for those who the enemy is holding their marriages ransom. Praise the Lord. For some, it's holding their family ransom. And one thing that the enemy will not allow you to do is to pray. Praise the Lord. He will not want you to pray. Hallelujah. Then he will also want to bring lack of joy to you. You are not happy. You don't even know why you are not happy. You are just sad. Amen. Those are all weapons, sorrow, bringing sorrow, heavy heart to you. But tonight, they shall be wiped away in the name Amen. of Jesus. 
So we we'll take our scripture tonight from John chapter 7, 37 to 39, the book of John. Hallelujah. John 7, 37. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. So you can drink. Is it not so? You not only have an experience, you will drink of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> he that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Out of his belly shall flow what? Rivers. One river? Rivers. Rivers of living water. Then what is this river we are talking about? Verse 39. But this spake he of the Spirit, which day that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified, which means he had not died to be glorified. So this scripture is talking about the Holy Spirit. So this water to drink is the Holy Spirit. We have to drink enough of the Holy Spirit. We have to be drunk on. Amen. We see examples of those that took the Holy Ghost. They drank of the Holy Ghost. And there's a way they behaved. When you are really filled with the Holy Ghost, there's a way you behave. It will be different from the way others view. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, so we'll go to another scripture. Uh, Acts chapter 2. Let us see the way some people got drunk on the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. Acts chapter 2. Verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Verse 2. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. That's going to happen here also today. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. They appeared to their what? Tongues. tongues. So the fire came like the tongue of a human being, the shape of a tongue. That's how it came down on top of their head. And it sat on each of them. Amen. So if you allow the Holy Ghost today, it will sit on your head. Amen. Amen. From your head, you enter into your body, to your belly. That's what I talk about to your spirit. Hallelujah. You enter into your innermost being. You will be filled with the Holy Ghost. When you are filled to stupor, it will start coming out from you. It will be, the Holy Ghost will be oozing out from you and be reaching out to others. Uh, the Holy Spirit flowing out of you will also make things easy. It will clear barriers from you because it's flowing out of you. Hallelujah. And one other thing it will do that is going to destroy sickness and diseases. Because you are filled with that power, with that fire that came on top that sat on their head. It's going to sit on you. It's going to go through you. And that is the river of life. When it goes into you, nothing that is dead can survive. No sickness, no disease. No, everything that is not of God is dead. Praise the Lord. They can survive in you in the name of Jesus. And whatever is troubling your destiny shall be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Verse 4, And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, look at verse 13. Okay, let me take it from verse 12. And they were all amazed. You no know, people that were passing by, that all came from all over the world, they came back. See, and they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Why are they all speaking in tongues? Speaking in languages that we don't understand. Some of us hear ourselves, some others didn't hear anything, so they were mocking. Others mocking, verse 13, said, What 
These men are full of new wine. Full of what? New wine. Which means they are drunk. Praise the Lord. They are full of new wine. Means that they are drunk. You no, know, new wine is very hot. Praise the Lord. In my place, they make drinks. Praise the Lord. That this uh, wine, very, very hot. People take that new wine and they get mad. Praise the Lord. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. Ephesians. Hallelujah. Ephesians 5, verse 18. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. So he's saying here, in other words, do not be drunk with wine, where is excess, but be drunken and be excess with the wine of the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. In most places of the Bible, when the Bible is talking about wine, it's talking about the Spirit of God. We need wine. Hallelujah. We need wine in our system. We need to be intoxicated. We need to be hot. Uh, then let's look at Psalm 46. Psalm 46, verse 1 to 4. Psalm 46. Psalm 46. Amen. He said, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be moved and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. Verse 4 says, there is what? There is a river. I want us to look at this scripture very, very carefully. Praise the Lord. Because, let me tell you, we can do all the fasting, we can pray, but if we do not have understanding of Scripture, it does not mean anything. Praise the Lord. That's why Scripture, knowing, having knowledge, deep knowledge of Scripture, is what gives us our place in destiny. Amen. Now, verse 4, he said, There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God. So there is what? A river. There is what? A river. The streams of that river will do what? They will make glad the city of God. The holy place, that is the holy place, of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. But I'm dwelling on verse 4. He said there is a river. Look at that scripture. What does it mean? There is a river. The streams thereof shall make glad the city of God. Amen. <laughs> Remember, I said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Is it not so? Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. So just imagine, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. So when all of us contribute those rivers, those streams, river is a stream. Where's the law? I know there are slight differences. Okay? Okay? A stream is full of stones, rock, and all those kind of things. So they are slight, but it's still a river. So when you flow, I flow, everybody flow. Hallelujah. Our river will allow rivers to flow. They connect. They form a very mighty ocean. Very mighty sea, or you can say a very mighty river. That is the Holy Ghost. So, in other words, you can say we are flowing from the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. Everybody is flowing from the Holy Ghost. We are flowing. So, allow yourself to flow. Amen. We are the one holding ourselves. Allow yourself to flow. See, we, even when we come to speak in tongues, let's not do like, you know, like we're trying to do. Ah, speaking in tongues, how do we even start? See, Holy Ghost is. It should be the easiest thing for you. To speak in tongues should be the thing that you should be delighted. In short, it should be the first thing that comes out of your mouth every morning. You hear some people say, um, I don't really speak in tongues. It's, it's when it comes. It does not come. It does not. You are the one that's going to speak in tongues. Hallelujah. 
You are the one that's going to speak in tongues. He has been given. Say it shall be in you forever. So, why are you waiting for it? Hallelujah. There are some things that will wait on him. There are some other things he's waiting on us. He's waiting. The other people say, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. God is waiting for us. May we know that he's waiting for us. And the time we need to wait, let's also know in the name of Jesus Christ. There's a river. So tonight, are you going to flow? Are you going to allow your river to flow? Yes. I'm not hearing you. Yes, sir. Are you going to flow? Yes, sir. <laughs> yes. You remember in Isaiah chapter 59, verse 19, he said, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will raise a standard. So if you do not have the spirit in you, what happens? The river, will, the flood will carry you away. The flood will carry that person away. But when there is the Holy Ghost in you, the Holy Ghost will just be released. What God wants is that he wants you to flow to other people too. You flow to other people. One thing I said to, I, I really love, anywhere I get to, I want the people to be imparted with the Holy Ghost. I want them to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I just want something to happen. I, I want them to be mad. I want them to be drunken in the Holy Ghost. Have you been drunk in the Holy Ghost before? Earlier, sometimes you begin to laugh. You just laugh. You just laugh. You just laugh. You don't know why you are laughing. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. There's someone I, I, I met one day. I was coming on the road, like nearly two years. And there was a lot of traffic somewhere at Shango the year. And she was flagging me down. A lot of people were on the road. So I just stopped for her, picked up. When we were coming on the road, I said, are you a Christian? I was just talking with her. And she said, yes. She's this, she's that. She took me at church. I said, okay. So she, was, she began to talk. I said, okay. She talked about angels. I said, okay, what do you know? How much do you know about angels? She said, let tell me. So I also started telling her what I know. So we just did some things. She started laughing. She was laughing until she came down. So she would laugh. I said, why am I laughing? She, once she finishes that, she, she starts to laugh. She was crying. Tears were dropping from her face. She was laughing. <laughs> so she came down. So, but since that time, my heart draws to her. So two weeks ago, I sent her a message. She said, who is this? I said, so, so, so. she said, wow, Jesus Christ, you are scared. I said, have you not been seeing my posting to you? I said, have I not been inviting you? I said, are you married? I said, she's always been married. I said, since that time, she said, yes. I said, okay, so where is your husband? I said, then, they are not together. I said, why? Say, one thing happened, then he left. When she gave birth to another one, uh, it disappeared. No, he has come and disappeared three times. And it's not even. I said, come, so why don't you come and handle this? Brother, she was telling me that I should tell her more about the problem. I said, okay, when you come, you hear more. I just shut up. I should be telling you online. What the, come. I sent her all the things, all those write ups, those informations. I said, see, one thing that the enemy will do to people is to cut them off from what is going to help them. And when things become critical, and these doctors invite them, they will go. Because they just believe they have to do something that is very big, like keep big cow or to bribe God or to bribe the gods. Then you don't have to. Some Christians, if you were to ask them to pay 200000 before they see you to pray, they will prefer it because they will believe that the thing will work for, you to, for them to pay that big amount that is going to work. Praise the Lord. So the simplicity of the gospel used to, they miss it because the gospel is so, so simple. Hallelujah. That's how the Holy Ghost is. When you are speaking in tongues, you may not even realize that a tremendous amount of power is flowing through you. But when certain things happen, you will know. When I was baptized in the Holy Ghost, I didn't really believe it because they prayed for other people. Everybody fell on my side, fell on my left. Nothing happened to me. I didn't even get any feeling of any kind. I started reading books. I read so many books. Can I take this book? One day I left my house. I went to one pastor's house. I said, I came for the Holy Ghost baptism. I woke him up from his sleep. <laughs> I laid him I was in his house. I, said, I went to the book. I said, I've read this book. This book said, I don't have to wait. This now. He said, Yeah, it's like that too. <laughs> he prayed. I said, I didn't feel anything. But I just believed from that book I read. So I just 
spoke whatever I wanted to speak because I was not sure. I just spoke by faith. Anything I liked, I just spoke it. So one day, I organized a school fellowship somewhere. And then, during break, they were praying. And they called me that I should come and join them to pray. Nearly I got there as we were praying with them. I just spoke those things I was speaking. <laughs> Hallelujah. And all the people on my left hand side, they just like, bruh, 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 on the ground. Hallelujah. From that day, I said, oh, so this thing is what happened. <laughs> God, that was what God did to convince me that the, what I was speaking was the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. That I was already baptized. Amen. Amen. Jesus spoke in tongues. He did. So when you speak in tongues, sometimes you don't know what to do again. You begin to speak in tongues. Before long, you will know what to do. You will know what to do in the name of Jesus Christ. So you are a stream. You are a river. You will flow today. Amen. You will flow today. Amen. Remember the scripture we read at that time, Ezekiel 47. He said, This river came from the right hand side of the temple of the living God. And then a man measured and it was ankle deep. That's a level of power. Then to knee, then to the loins, the waist. Then from there, it was a big river. I could not measure it again. A river that cannot be measured. He started to swim. That's the swimming dimension of the Holy Ghost. You just get lost in the river of the Holy Ghost. You begin to swim. So sometimes you worship God to a level that you, you don't know what to do again. You start crying. You just start crying before Him. That's what we are talking about. That's the swimming dimension. Or you don't, you, you pray to the level that you no longer have prayer points. You just begin to thank, thank you, Lord. You begin to sing. And the songs don't stop. They are just coming. They are just coming. They are just coming. Praise the Lord. You are swimming. Hallelujah. You get to the level you are drunk. You begin to say things. People say, are you okay? Who says that kind of a thing? But you know that somebody is saying it for you. Even Jesus spoke in tongues. Hallelujah. Like we said at that time. He said what? Eli, Eli, Lama, Sabatani. Nobody heard what he said. Before that time, everybody was hearing what he was saying. But when he said that, it was a vocabulary from somewhere. From them. They didn't hear it. They started to guess. <laughs> Some say it's calling Elijah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You hear God tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. We know that Zion is talking about the church. So, there's a river. Alright? There's a river. There's a river. The streams of that river shall make glad the city of God. That is Zion. So when we begin to flow in our streams, we'll be glad. Hallelujah. Everybody here shall be glad. Everybody will be glad. Amen. Everybody will be glad. Amen. In the name of Jesus, we are praying. So let's take a look uh, at John chapter 5. Amen. John chapter 5. There's a pool. John 5. Verse 2. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In this lay the great multitude of impotent folks, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at the certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Then whosoever first of all gets into that water is saved. An angel what? Troubles it. An angel comes to trouble the water. So whosoever steps in first into that river is saved. Sorry, is healed of whatsoever. I live. You know where that pool is now? That pool is living inside you. So all you just need to do is to stay. It's when that pool is stayed that there will be healing. Is it not so? Remember that Ezekiel 47. He said, and that river flowed. That same river flowed. And anywhere it flowed into, there was healing. If the river flows into other rivers, there will be healing there. Which means death is removed. 
So, in the same vein, when you flow, great things begin to happen. When you flow, healings will happen for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, we remember the story of the Samaritan woman and Jesus. Jesus said, give me water to drink. That is found in John chapter 6, from verse 6 to 26. We won't read that for time's sake. But in their conversation, Jesus says, give me water to drink. And she says, um, I can't give to you. I have you a Jew asking me a Samaritan to give me water. I can't give you. We don't talk, we don't greet, we don't do things together. Because people say we are not Jews. And really, they were half cast. <laughs> they were half Jews because... There was a time that they were conquered by another country. And th that country, the king brought in many of their people into that place to marry them. So they were now mixed race. Praise the Lord. So the Jews, they are according to the Mosaic law. You don't marry anybody. If you marry anybody and give birth, that child is a useless person. We don't want to know yet about that. In short, you that marry yourself, they will stone you. So they didn't see them as human beings. And now Jesus, a Jew, is asking her for water. He said, I can't give you. He said, give me water to drink. Hallelujah. <laughs> he said, but if, if you know who I am, you ask me to give you the living water. The one you are given does not have life, but the one I have, I give to people have life. So that water I will give to him shall be in him a well of water, springing up to everlasting life. It will give eternal life. And the eternal life we are talking about is not the general eternal life. We are talking about Zoe, which is the life of God. You know, everybody has eternal life. Even unbelievers have eternal life. But the kind of the eternal life they have is the one that will lead them, that they will die in hell and to be eternal. They will be living there for life. They will not die. But our own is the eternal life that gives peace, that gives prosperity, that we live with God. It's called Zoe. It's the very life that is in God is the kind of eternal life we have. Not the eternal life of the devil. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? So eternal life is divided into two. Those that go to hell, it's not eternal life, they are going to enjoy the suffering. We that go to hell is eternal life too. But the kind of eternal life is called Zoe, Z-O-E, which is the God kind. And that one, no, no sickness, no disease, no lack, no want. Everything that does not happen to God cannot happen to it. Hallelujah. Let me read something to you. In, John, uh, in Matthew chapter 3, um, 11 to 12, John the Baptist said, The man that is coming after me, that man will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So it's Jesus that gives that river. And that's why he said, If any man thirst, let it come. Okay? So out of his belly shall flow. Hallelujah. So Jesus releases that. Amen. I said the Holy Ghost is a New Testament wine. You can drink your way to stupor. You can drink your way <laughs> into oblivion. You can drink so much alcohol that you lose consciousness or fall deeply asleep. To so be under the influence of wine, that's what we are talking about. To so begin to see through wine. You know, wine gives vision. I hope you know, people see vision. <laughs> when people drink to stupor, they begin to see double double. I've never been drunk before, but <laughs> I'll live here. But I'd like I can describe <laughs> I wish I had been drunk before. It would have helped better. <laughs> Hallelujah. No, there are some things that you experienced there before you, you, you can't tell. Just like anybody that has not been married before can never advise you well on marriage. Forget it. Too. They can only quote scriptures for you. I said, God said, when you marry women, we will be dead. <laughs> <laughs> some people say, if the woman is submissive, the man will automatically love her. Which means, if she's not submissive, that's a problem. I even went to a church where the pastor was conducting marriage. I wept. The whole problem, they put it on top of the woman. Every of the problem. They read that place from Ephesians. See, they turned it upside down. Because the Bible said, husband, love your wives. But first of all, the previous verse, it said, wives, submit yourself to your husband in everything. 
Later, he now said, wives, okay, husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. So, the pastor was saying, you see, wives, submit yourself to your husband. It's when you submit, your husband will love you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. It's not like that. It's not like that. That a verse of scripture came first does not mean that it's in that order. God is saying it should be in that order. Is it true? It's not true. It's not true like that. Amen. The way you see scripture written, they will first of all introduce it. Sometimes it's the, it's the last, it's, it's the third verse that is actually the first thing God is asking. One the name of God permits, we look at some scriptures like that. He said, wives, submit yourself to your husband. Then he later said, husband, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave his life for it. The husbands don't want to give their lives for their wives. Hallelujah. How many husbands want to die? So they can say, we'll shoot you. I say, okay, don't shoot my wife, just shoot me. <laughs> I've heard of them, I'll, I'll say something like that. Amen. But that's what they're supposed to do, isn't it? Amen. He said, husbands, love your wives. So the pastor was saying, the, the, he was saying that. It means that if your husband is not loving you, it means that you are not submissive. It's not true. Everybody must do their part. You do your own. Whether she's doing her own or not, you just do your own. You just love her. If it's not loving you, you just submit. Continue to submit. Continue to submit. If he continues to misbehave for life, God can remove him and give you another one. There's a way we do it. So I'm not opening a gap for you to go and do whatever you want to do. Praise the Lord. But there's a way God will do it. One prominent speaker for marriages in Nigeria one time told uh, the congregation that God told her, look, I will kill you. And when you die, I'll give your husband another woman. And you know the funny thing? You will not be missed. Nobody will miss you. Your children will not miss you. Your husband will not miss you. Because the woman that will come. <laughs> he said her head was correct that day. <laughs> she said her head was correct. Her husband was also a pastor. She was so jealous. Any little thing she will be talking, she will be. God said, I will kill you because you are disturbing him. I will remove you and give you another person. I said, You know the funny thing? The person will do the job better than you. I said, You know the thing? You will not be missed. He said, Is that you will not be missed? That pain that. That's the one that. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, the condition for my loving my wife should not be based on submission. You know, it can affect, each can affect the other, right? Yeah. If I'm not loving you, it can affect your submission too, we know. And if she's not submitting, it can also affect the relationship. That's true now. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So that's why we have to know scripture for ourselves. If you have not been married, you cannot really explain. You can't. You can't. You can't. You can't understand it. Don't go and quote Apostle Paul that was not married. He said he wrote by inspiration of scripture of the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost wanted him to write those things for us. Hallelujah. How dare you talk about giving birth is very, very easy when you have not been pregnant before. You never have given birth before. You have to see a pregnant person, see how lazy she is. She can never be so much lazy or let. <laughs> you, you have been pregnant. How can you listen? Really That's why when you are filled with the Holy Ghost, you, you are the only one that knows what you are passing through. You are the only one that knows how it's doing you. Praise the Lord. The walls will begin to close. So tonight, you're going to submit yourself under the influence of the Holy Ghost. They told them at that time in the Bible, they said, these men are drunk. They must see you like that in the name of Jesus. You will feel to the extent that you will be like a drunkard. Hallelujah. It's the wine of the Holy Ghost. You have to be drunk. You have to be filled with that excess wine. So to begin to see through the wine. So when people are drunk, they see many things. They begin to talk so many rubbish. Isn't that so? Because they are no longer themselves. Hallelujah. They will be telling you, you are the one that is drunk. You are telling me I'm the one that is drunk. Your father is drunk. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because they are drunk. 
Hallelujah. So they begin to say things that don't make sense um, to people. And you see, people that are drunk, they flow together. Is it not true? And they understand themselves. A drunkard understands his fellow drunkard. Hallelujah. Um, lastly, let me just run through this. People that drank of the living waters in the Bible. Let us see some examples of people that drank of the living waters in the Bible. Number one, the entire church in Acts chapter 2 that we read, they were drunk of with the wine of the Holy Ghost. People said, these guys are drunk. Number two, we saw the apostles, they were drunk. Mary, the mother of Jesus, Mary Magdalene, all of them, they were drunk with the Holy Ghost. And let's imagine, have you ever imagined how they believe that they want them to be people drunk? Just imagine one that all of us here that we are drunk. Just imagine that. With enough dose. You know, most people that are drunk are not fully drunk. I hope you know. Some of them are half drunk. That's why they can say drive to the house. You need to see them when you are going for first service in Canada. You are on the way, 4.30, you are already on the way. You see them, they'll go like this on the road, they'll go like this. You have, to, you have to check them properly before you overtake. Otherwise, they can even cause accident for you. So we are talking about being properly drunk, being soaked with the wine of the Holy Spirit. Apostle Paul was drunk. In Acts chapter 9, verse 17, Ananias laid hands on him, and he was filled with the Holy Ghost, and his eyes opened. He was blind. No, the sun struck him blind, right? But his eyes were opened. When the Holy Ghost came upon him, things happened to him. Then his ministry also started. If you can have a good relationship with the Holy Ghost, you will not, it will not be difficult for you to have direction for your life and for your destiny. But our biggest problem is our phones. Sometimes I off my phone. I just off like 12 today. I don't even know how much time it was on. See, off your phones. Phones have taken the place of God. Praise the Lord. Some of us will even monitor our phones. Every five minutes to go and carry it. Any miss call. <laughs> that's addiction. That's what they call it. You are addicted. It means that like this phone spirit that is controlling you. Some of us, some of us, if they say, submit your phones for one day, you can even go sick. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. You can even go sick. But I'm looking forward to a day when we'll go on an expedition. All of us will just, if we have time, we we'll just go somewhere to whether redemption camp or mother of prayer camp or to winners camp or somewhere. We we'll just go and have fellowship for one week. You drop your phone in your house. Praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> See what I'm talking about now. You drop your phone in your house. You go. Hallelujah. <laughs> Stan is just saying hi. They will not come out because of that, right? These people will not come because of that. That's for them to drop their phone. But do you know that there was a time when there was nothing like phones at all? There was even no telephone. At all. Then when landline came, before that there was a gramophone, where you are allowed to just say maybe one word. <laughs> just or two words. Come, bring. As the 